Time now for the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network with your hosts, Kevin Arnold and Always Positive Jay. It's 7 p.m. on a Sunday. You know what time it is. Well, it's during the fall, but there was no Browns game. It's a bye week special right here on the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network. I guess you could consider us a Cavs post game show today because they played early on at 3 30 and just beat up on the Lakers. Lakers had them for the first half, but the Lakers always have every team for the first half. And, you know, when you don't when you don't have shooters around LeBron James, this is what happens. Looking at you, Rob Palenka, don't know. Not that I'm rooting for the Lakers over the Cavs. I'm just saying Lakers are an iconic franchise in the NBA. You have one of the greatest players of all time playing for your franchise right now. And you didn't surround him with shooters. I think the Cavs have more wins than both L.A. teams combined. I, well, I heard <laughs> I the think, I think right. they do. I've heard the Clippers are playing better though. But I still think the Cavs actually have more than the, both of them combined. They're just they, they're just always get hurt with injuries. Like, not to no pun intended. Like they just they just that team just always somehow injuries. Paul George. You ain't getting my uh, sympathy. I've had enough injuries in our team. So Paul George, what has he been all his career? Pretty good player, injury prone. Uh, and unfortunately, it happened after that scary one in the exhibition game mm-hmm. with Team USA. And it hasn't stopped. Gerard Cherry says it all the time. Once the injuries start, they don't stop. Kawhi Leonard, lately, one of the better defensive players, two-way players in the game, not available. What's your best ability? Your availability. availability. Our availability, though, was to be here tonight for the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network. So we have pretty good ability. I'm Kevin Arnold. I'm joined by Always Positive Jay and Peter Tellup. We call him audio because he is just he, floating around somewhere. Floating around somewhere. Sure, what Jarvis was to Iron Man, audio is to the Voice of the Land. We are brought to you by Vector Technical to get the right person in the right job the first time. And, of course, follow us at VTL underscore pod on Twitter if you're tuning in, watching us there. Thank you so much. And we'll get you all the other things we got to read off throughout the show later on and some more commercials as well. We will be joined by Gab Gowdy of the Unsportsmanlike Conduct podcast and works for FanDuel as well as uh, Jay just slides me a we don't, <laughs> again, a bit of information, that's all. <laughs> yeah, just, just sliding phones just back and forth on the table. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, but I guess being the bye week special, we, that kind of indicates we're going to talk about the Browns and we haven't been together since the Browns played on Monday night. We said it was a must win game. Boy, did they come out like it was. I didn't see that coming. I, I don't know about you. Do you, I guess my biggest question coming out of that game is, do you have, did that raise your faith in this team to really take these two weeks seriously. Yeah, it totally did. Like you could see that was the defense I thought was going to be here mm-hmm. all year. Like I'm still in shock that it hasn't showed up till then. Cause in the off season, I thought our defense was just going to be stellar and they finally showed up. We put, we beat a team on all three phases of football, special teams, offense and defense. And we finally got a comfortable win and even with that huge lead, I don't know about you, but I was pretty still uncomfortable until that clock hit zero. And surprisingly enough, Jets beat the Buffalo Bills. So that Jets loss doesn't quite sting as bad. They might be the real right. deal right All now. Right. I mean, they still shouldn't have lost, but I thought the Jets were supposed to be like, a garbage team. It's like, all right, at least a good team came back on us. Not actually, I thought the Jets were supposed to be a decent team, but like one of those six and eleven type teams where you mm-hmm. you see what they're building. Yeah, it's just not enough. What really ticks me off when I saw that score, and I didn't watch any football at all today. And you guys can tell, call me whatever you want about football fan, not a football fan. Don't really care. I have better things to do when I actually have a like a Sunday and had created plans. Actually, I was supposed to be calling soccer today, but that didn't happen. I mean, you're a Browns fan. You watch Browns games. I don't think you are like you're dedicated to watching NFL games unless you, they're on. You'll watch them more or yeah. less. You're a massive soccer fan. That's well, who you are. Yes, I'm a massive soccer fan, but it's also like I'm not expecting a November the just 
even being the first November in this version of it in 2022, I'm not expecting it to be 70 plus degrees. So you didn't miss anything. You you could have watched the Bengals just blow out one team, and then Tampa Bay and I don't even know who they were playing. L.A. Rams. It's yeah, like it was ten six. So when we boring. Turned it off. I, I you didn't get, miss what, much. I saw the Jets score beating the the Bills, and I, and yes, there is the common cliche, and it, it works because it's it happens any given Sunday. Any team can beat any team. That's what you get a week of prep every single time, and the Jets executed their game plan. But they've also been playing pretty well this year since that second game. What ticks me off is the Browns have given away so many games this year. That could be the Browns this year. With having the the quarterback that you, you win all in, all in on suspended, you get Jacoby Brissett as your backup. He has played decent, better than everybody has expected to this point. And you you had to go into Monday night at two and five when he must win scenario. Luckily, for some reason, the Bengals seemed to be the Browns' magic elixir and Joe Burrow's kryptonite for some reason. That's good, but you had to win to get to three and five into your bye week. If you would have stacked some of those early wins, what are the Cavs doing right now? Is they're building chemistry? Stacking and you, W's. Stacking W's because it's not perfect. They they go into shooting lulls, shooting ice-cold spells. They did that against the Celtics when they uh, beat them 114-113 in overtime at home for the second win over them in overtime this season. They go into these absolute cold spells, and they can't even get a stop. So they're not perfect right now. They're not playing their best basketball, but they're stacking wins through the progression period of the early part of 2022-2023. The Browns did not do that. You could be the Jets if you would have done that, and yet you gave them a game where they built their confidence, and now they're having a great season. So, See, yes, the Jets' loss doesn't look as bad, but I, I could argue that the Browns helped the Jets be who they are now because, again, when a young upstart team gets some early wins, early confidence, and you want that taste more and more, you get it early enough where you want it more and more, and you get it more and more, that leads to a much more successful season than anybody's expecting out of you. I totally agree with you, Cam. I am sorry to go <laughs> <such a laughs> but long Here's round. what the Browns need to do, and I have a saying. I always say, no regrets, only lessons. And the Browns oh, can live Ty by Lue this. Are you Ty Lue up in here? Who? Are you Ty Lue up in here? There was wins and lessons. No, I, I've, <laughs> I've said this way before I've known Ty Lue. I don't even know he said I always said, though, no regrets, yeah. only lessons. Because most of the time you have a regret, there's a lesson learned for, right. to be learned. Right. The, the Browns can either have regrets or they can have lessons from those losses. They can grow from those. Those are great lessons to learn from all those. Like, you're up 14. You can't take your foot off pedal. That's a lesson to be learned. They better never have have that happen again you can't give up these coverage you can't all those lessons they have to learn from them. and if they do grow from them it's going to make them better but it's on them we could sit there and tell them to sit there and do this each and every week if they continue on and build from what they did last week and keep moving forward and keep getting better and keep getting better play all three phases of football like they did this team has the ability to go on the run their talent is there it's they just have to stack W's. They cannot lose anymore. Like, any loss is devastating to this point. And you could just totally ruin your whole season and you ain't making the playoffs. And, and it's not going to be It's not gonna be easy, especially, I mean, you still got three more games with Jacoby as your, as yeah. your quarterback. I know and, Andrew Berry came out and said, and people made it seem like breaking news, that he's saying Deshaun Watson is still expected to be the starter once he's eligible to return December 4th, I think it is, against the Houston Texans. Whoa! Just like, <laughs> oh no my way. God, I was so floored when I heard that. Uh, like, are you kidding me? Of course, just yes. Deshaun Watson is going to like that's that's what you traded all of this away for. That's what you paid him two hundred thirty million dollars for. Even if let's say you have, and we don't had Watson, these next three games are no easy. Like, no, Miami's a great football team. Then yes. you got the Bills, who are a fantastic football team, and probably probably and angry if you don't get if oddly, they don't get right next week. Yeah. Then guess who's coming in to get right next to? Yeah, and then you got Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, who I, if we if we lose to them, 
I'm going to be really <laughs> upset because they don't look all that good. But I was actually concerned about that game at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Now it seems like. We have a pretty good chance with that one. I, I and I, just like you, what, what we just said, when young teams or 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 teams that aren't expected to do much in a season, especially in the NFL, where it's once every week, they stack some of those early wins, mm-hmm. uh, and they build that confidence, and they want that taste of a win more and more, and they get it more and more because that confidence continues to build and build and build throughout the year. The exact same could be said on the opposite end of the spectrum when one team, like a team, is kind of not living up to expectations and even with players that have shown consistently throughout their career, it's like one bad scenario, one, you know, one thing that you can't get over one bad habit you can't get over. And then the losses start to stack up. It's a snowball effect either way. Yeah. That's where, that's where the Buccaneers are this year. The problem is, you know, the next three, yes, are Miami, Buffalo, Tampa Bay two of those on the road before this weekend when you saw the Jets beat the Bills you would think you would have thought like you got to go two and one in those games and really you got to go two and oh against Miami and Tampa Bay you got to go two and oh against Florida um down in Florida and then one at home Buffalo is still a chance because any team has a chance but you cannot be this is the one thing that cannot happen with the Browns coming out of the bye week you can't be everybody's get right game no, and and it felt like they were that mm-hmm. in the first half. That was the theme of the first half. We are everyone else's get right game. I don't know what's going on. R two D two is talking about <laughs> that, through your like, shirt, man. My T shirt's talking. I was like, <laughs> what was that? Oh, oh, we're picking up someone's. What is going on? What right? is happening? <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> We're no park idea. chassis for eight dollars or something like that. I don't know what's wow, happening. That, that I've that was really that, bizarre. That was it totally threw us totally off. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so Brown's got to win, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I, I know you're trying to fix your chassis right now. What do you What do you think about it? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Brown's got to win. There yeah. We go. <laughs> Oh man, I, I mean, mean, I have no idea where that's even coming from. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? We're gonna take a little break and allow Peter to. Uh, we'll see if we can get everything going right. I, there's not much more to say about the Browns. We'll we'll talk. We'll ask uh, Gab Gowdy, who joined us, works for Fanduel, and of course, one of the co-hosts of the Unsportsmanlike uh, Conduct podcast as well. We'll we'll talk to her a little bit about her thoughts on the Browns' first half of the season, maybe where. What the second half, what really needs to change? What is there one thing that she would change that feels like it could help in the second half of the year? And then we'll get into the Cavs in the second segment as well. And we'll give our reactions to all that. And I still got a rant I got to do. So we'll let the person working on the chassis on their car or whatever uh, automobile they are working on right now get their stuff going. We'll take a break right here on The Voice of Land on the Big Play Network. Whether you're looking to hire new talent or start a new career, Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has helped thousands of job seekers advance in their career with reputable partners throughout Northeastern Ohio. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. With an above average hire in rate of one in four candidates, Vector works hard to connect the right person with the right opportunity the first time. Vector Technical hires for skilled manufacturing and light industrial work and is sure to have a career that you've been looking for. To learn more, visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com. Welcome back to the bi-week special of The Voice of the Land right here on the Big Play Network. I am Kevin Earl, always positive Jay across the table. Peter Tellip producing here tonight, someone working on the chassis of their car as well as we were talking about the Browns. First half of their season, of course, this is the bye week special, so we did have to talk about Browns. We'll talk about Cavs a little bit later. We will be joined in just a little while by Gab Gowdy from the Unsportsmanlike Conduct uh, Podcast and the uh, and works for FanDuel, of course, too. Maybe she has some uh, sports betting tips, too. As we get closer and closer, Jay, January 1st, not uh, – less than two months away before sports betting is legal here in the state of Ohio. And we don't just say we're putting credits on something. I mean, I think we will because we're not, we're not going to be like big sports betters, but, um, you know, I got my, uh, rules set up for it. I, uh, 
every year I'm going to give myself a hundred bucks, and whatever I can make or gain from it, that's what I get uh, used for the whole year. If uh, if the experience that Jana and I had at the uh, casino downtown, I mean, and we didn't we didn't spend much money at the casino, but uh, if our experience there and our first ever casino experience. Pain, playing penny slots is any indication. I don't think we'll be doing much. I'll tell you this much: I did a five-game parlay on the Bet Jack app or whatever they for, yeah, like that that you training camp thing. Yeah. yeah, and the Bills losing ruined my uh, par- five-game parlay. Really? I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't see that one coming. Hey man, I, that's uh, if you're trying to dip into five-team parlays. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I've heard like that's not the way to go. No, that's that's why it's free. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way free. not to go. But the direction we are going to go with the show right now is we are going to welcome welcome in Gab Gowdy, who joins us to talk a little Browns and a little Cavs as well. Gab, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Of course, uh, you work with FanDuel and do the Unsportsmanlike Conduct podcast. Thank you so much for taking time on your Sunday night. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, we were talking in the, in our first segment about, uh, the Browns first half, we hadn't had a chance to really react to the, to the Monday, Monday night game. And we said going into that one, that it was, it was a must win. It seemed like, you know, f- finally for the first week out of those first eight, all three mm-hmm. phases of, of the game showed up besides that blocked 53 yard field goal. It seemed like everybody had that same mentality in that, in that building. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I, I was excited. <laughs> I was excited. That's all I can say. I didn't expect it would be like that. I, I had a feeling, you know, like they always beat up on the Bengals. I'm like, maybe they'll have a chance right now. Maybe this will be the time. And um, they did well above and beyond everything I thought they were going to do. The fear was like, everyone kept saying how like we own Joe Burrow. We own Joe Burrow. I'm like, great. This dude's going to hear this. And I swear, I thought he was going to throw for 500 yards. And like I mean, seven. I thought so too. I was, I was really scared. No, I was, I ain't going to lie. I totally thought we were going to get blown out in that game. I'm like, and then the way it just went, I'm like, oh my God, we finally get to win. And where I'm not a nervous wreck the whole, to the very end of this. Like, we won soundly finally. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, the whole game was, well, besides the Amari interception at the beginning, like, the whole game <laughs> felt pretty good. Yeah, well, let's just never call that play ever right. again. I mean, I don't think he ever wants to do it again either. It was cool. It was a nice little try. Like, he had his moment, but we know to never have that moment again. Now, he yeah. even said he he actually attempted to throw that out. Like, he wasn't trying to throw it to the shoot. He was trying <laughs> yeah. to throw it out of bounds. He's like, man, that's a lot harder than I thought. Let's not do that again. Yeah, his post game was pretty good with that. Yeah. He was, he's like, that was totally me. That's tough. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's just rip that page out of the playbook and Who's, throw it He's away. been a, br- a total bright spot this year. Like, you look at these yeah, receivers sure. that are getting traded, like Claypool for a second, and then you see what we got Amari Cooper for. You're like, man, that was one hell of a trade by Andrew Barry. Yeah, well, he's one of the best route runners in in the NFL, and that's that's for a reason. And it's, it doesn't take long, I think, for a quarterback and, and a guy like that to to find find some actual actual chemistry on the field. I will say, I was kind of getting some sound after that after that game, and. He, I know he wanted to like swear. <laughs> he wanted to drop some bombs to the to the media and stuff because he was, but he was having a good time with it. And that's like one of those first pitches where you just hold on to it too long, and instead of you know going straight down the pipe, it goes way off to the side. One of those funny ones. If he was trying to throw mm-hmm. that out of bounds, I don't know. That was a that was a dart to the to the defensive bag. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I mean, looking at the first half of the season though, we knew that. We knew uh, Watson was going to be out through the bye week and and after that. Brissett has seemed like like a bright spot, but is there one thing that you can pinpoint? And I, Jay, I want to get your answer on this too. Is there one thing you can pinpoint that you really want to see change or come out of that Monday night game and be a consistent element for this team in the second half if they're going to make a run? Well, I mean, we can all collectively agree uh, the defense shouldn't play like that all the time. Right. Like that's, that's yeah. that should be it. They're getting paid a lot of money. They're really, they're supposed to be really good at what they do. So maybe just keep doing that. Whatever you guys did there, do it again. Act like you're playing the Bengals every week. I don't know what else they could do. Seems just, like the only thing that ever like fixes them. They play the Bengals. So they got to pull the water boy where they just imagine everyone <laughs> wearing the Bengals and just use their right. imagination and they'll just ball out week in and week out. It's great. Miles looked like he was, he's, he was the healthiest he's been all year, and especially coming yeah. out of that, uh, that car accident. Like, he looked the healthiest and the freshest he has been all year long. Backing up that 
uh, that great Halloween display he had, he really he really did take Joe Burrow and the Bengals to to the upside down. Uh, yeah, he really did. I just feel like I don't know. I feel like Zach Taylor, for whatever reason it is, I don't know. If you're playing Miles Garrett, maybe do something else. You yeah, know? you might want to chip him and put a tight else, end out there it's too. It's not working. Yeah, I, I, we appreciated the single uh, blocking on <laughs> Miles Garrett. Right, I said hmm, interesting, but okay, we'll take it. I mean, I guess I want to ask you guys: Did Miles Garrett putting up Halloween displays bother any of you guys? Because it didn't me. One, I, he no. doesn't take time out of his own time to do it. He pays people to do it that are professionals, and like people were upset. They're like, I can't believe this guy's doing this again. Like, it's just how outside Halloween displays like. Right, like, did they miss the one last year? Because I feel like the one last year was even worse. Oh no, people didn't miss that either. The, no, the, beat, the, 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 the beat writers were were all in on that. They they oh, they, my they, God. they saw the they saw the Halloween decorations. I think the QB graveyard that time, and then him wearing a costume. But I think he was like one of the only ones going into Halloween weekend wearing a costume on the Browns. No, and there the Bra- are a bunch of people. There are a bunch of people with This costumes. week, yeah. Well, this, this week, year. but last year, everybody oh. was on it because, you know, Miles was supposed to be a leader, and the team, I think, got oh. absolutely trounced that weekend. So I knew that people were looking for that. They were looking for that to be a storyline coming out of this if the Browns went to 2-6 and six and, and yeah. all of these, all the pageantry of the players coming in and all of these – uh, all of these costumes and stuff. I did think, with even though we're past it now and he didn't get traded, Cream Hunt wearing a Joker mask, I thought was kind of a double, uh, you know, it kind of had like other meaning to it too, not just being Halloween. That right. one I think would have brought up more conversation that the Browns would have lost. I'm just glad he won, so now he can actually put up Christmas lights and not people complain about it. Hopefully, <laughs> like he could decorate for Christmas now and not get right. made fun of for it. Oh, I mean, it'll. But if he puts up any sort of Christmas lights in the design of like Tua Tungavailoa or yeah. uh, Tom Brady, Josh Allen, I love you know, a Tom Brady one. Hey, <laughs> real quick, the Browns are going to beat the Bills. I believe it. By the way, like I'm, I fully believe it. Don't ask me why, but they're doing it. So were you surprised by that game today, the Jets beating beating the Bills? Yeah, I would say it was surprising. I didn't think – I thought the Bills were going to win, but I didn't think it was going to be like a lot to a little. I thought they would put up a decent fight, mm-hmm. but Zach Wilson would do some dumb things to where the Bills would win. But he didn't do those dumb things, but he also didn't play very well, but he didn't do – I mean, that Jets defense is the does. truth. They're really good. Yeah. yeah, you I've, hold the Bills that many points, you're doing something right. Well, and I, and right. I heard driving in to do the show tonight, uh, Sal Palantonio from ESPN. I think he was doing radio call of the game, and uh, he said that Josh Allen said something about his mistakes today, his interceptions, his turnovers, and you know, used some yeah. prof- profanity as well in it. But basically said like he had, you know, a mind fart like all all game long. If you if you got Josh Allen doing that, I mean. They're, the Browns do have a chance, but the first test is going down to to Miami. Yeah. Do you think that they're doing the right things over these two weeks, Gab? I mean, I know we're only a week into the bye week. We got another week of prep going before we go down to Miami. What do you hope that they, they're getting done, at least in this off week? Players getting rest, but what else should they be doing so that the defense comes out like they did against the Bengals? Oof, I have no idea. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just pretend that, like I said, pretend it's going to be the Bengals. I don't know what it's going to take for them to get it together. I really don't know, and I can't base their performance off of just last week because no. every time we play the Bengals, it's a massacre, every single time. And I feel like it's just, I can't. I can't base it off the Bengals. Cause I'd I know... have to say they just can't ride the high of that win they gotta it, they gotta be moved right. on like all right you beat the Bengals, great that's the past move on bust your mm-hmm. ass get to work study get your body nice and rested and healthy and get ready to take on an, a hell of an offense because you're going to need that same performance that you just did and you can't right. rely um, on last game because yeah. that ain't going to give you no points for this game yeah Am I crazy yeah, for fearing that they're not doing the right thing, though, because of that it's still back to when John Johnson called out his team and saying that, and it it didn't really he translate until that. Monday night? Am I, I don't know. Well, he shouldn't be doing that because he needs to get it together, too. I, and we said that 
here on the show. Like it, it's one thing if you if if it gets so bad that you have to bring it to the media, like you know that it's it's bad. Right. But, but like, look at yourself first. Yeah. The reason and why. And reevaluate with everybody else. Right. And I mean, you're. You fit in right with the show because I feel like we we bring these things up on the, on when we're talking about stuff and people don't. Yeah, I don't. We try to and look I at like it. Like him, but like I feel like he could play yeah. a little better. Yeah, like when you're the guy that when you're part of the problem and you're you're calling out like you're not the problem. That's yeah, where the like a theme. That's where that? the that's where the whole mess was last year, and we thought that we that w- one guy leaving that locker room. Was the change to that? It didn't feel like that in the well, first half. Change to the offense, but it stayed with the defense, I guess. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I don't know what happened with with this defense. We talked about how uh, in the first segment we talked about how outside of the Browns having the Bengals be their magic elixir, their get right game, it felt like the Browns were everybody else's get right game in the first half of the half, half of the season, and that shouldn't be the case with all this talent. Yeah, for sure. And they've put yeah, them. Sure, definitely. They've put themselves in a tough predicament mm-hmm. in the second half. If you think that Deshaun Watson's gonna be able to knock off two years of not playing, if we're just looking at him in a f- pure football standpoint, elite quarterback type standpoint, he's just gonna knock off all that rust. It, I mean, it's not like it looked that great in the preseason. I know the preseason doesn't matter, but it sure mattered when you saw the defense doing the same things they were doing then that they're doing now outside of that Monday night game. Hey, dude, just having timing with the receivers that takes time like i'm sure he could still throw the ball just as hard as he did he's probably just as fast as he was and just as accurate but you you have to get timing like that takes time you can't just get that overnight like otherwise people would be trading quarterbacks Mm -hmm. left and right and not caring because you just plug and play and that don't work I, i guess bringing it down to brass tacks for both of you jay gab what is the what do you guys see as the second half record? What will the Browns record be in these last eight games? Will they make the playoffs with that record as well? Gab, no. I'll start with you. What What do you, how many <laughs> games? I don't think they will. <laughs> and I don't either. How many games, just, how many games do they have to win in the second half to make the playoffs? All of them. Pretty much. You got to win. Yeah, you got to win. And I don't think we're going to. I said we're going to beat the Bills. <laughs> Stupid to say out loud. <laughs> but um, you got to win all of them. Jay? Uh, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they'll just miss out, and you're going to go back and be like, man, right. all those, just a couple of those close games, just a couple plays away, and mm-hmm. that's how it's going to end. So well, I'd say Watson, what does he get, six games? Since the 11 games. Hmm? Since like the ele- like, I yeah. said, yeah, they're not making it. Like, your season's good luck. See how it goes. It's going to be a mess. So. I, and I think the most unfortunate thing about that is, I, like, you, I think we were kind of talking about that, too. We all felt like the 11-game suspension really hurt the season because we thought, you know, Jacoby Brissett, he's been a career backup. Every game that he wins, he loses two or three other ones. And you, you thought, like, the offense was going to be a problem. The defense might be able to keep them in games, but they might not have enough. The The season might not look as good. Everybody gets a pass after this year. And yet it's been the exact opposite that has been the problem for most of the season that makes this so frustrating that they're, they're not going to make the playoffs because Brissett, you can't really put it on I'll him. give you guys hope. I'll give you guys hope. Last game showed me that Stefanski actually can change what he doesn't do like – they showed they will run the ball. Like what, I think they ran twice as much they threw finally, and the results came like we destroyed the Bengals. If they stick to the script and this defense plays this defense, our run game does what we're supposed to do, and we run the ball like we just did, use both backs to both their ability, we could make a run. Like there is, It's capable of happening. It's not an impossible task. I truly believe like, the talent's there. It's a matter of if they go out and execute and history has shown us the Browns don't do that. But like I said, it's there. They have the talent. They have more talent than this team we've ever seen them with, so, like since 99 at least. Yeah, and you did all these one-year deals and everything like that. It's- Not to mention the rest of this league is really good. Like any team could beat any team, like the, any given Sunday. Like there's no super elite teams I don't think out there. The Bills so. showed today they're beatable. Yeah. They- the Avs got faith we're going to beat them. Like and you could beat anybody. I've been saying it for weeks, though. I don't. They don't scare me like <laughs> teams that used to scare me are well like 
the Chiefs when they first came out, and they were just... They still scare me. Yeah, they kind of do, just because you could literally be up 24 points at three minutes and, ago, and that dude will come out. back. But hmm. Yeah, yeah, I... I don't know. There's there's a bunch of cheat codes in the, in the NFL in terms of players, but again, nobody's really running away with anything mm-hmm. this year, and I think that's what gives um, everybody at least a chance. I just don't know where I just, I just don't see how the Browns can just the problem flip is the too is just like the Ravens that. got like a cakewalk schedule coming up. Like it, they might not lose again. Yeah, well, they'll take care of the the cakewalk schedule, unlike the Browns did, but. I want to yeah, have a little bit of find a way to win all the time. Yeah. Let's talk about some winning. Let's on the other side of this break. Yeah, let's uh we're gonna hit a break. Gab, do you mind staying with us just for uh another you got qu- it. quick segment? We're gonna have a, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about a fun team in this town right. on the other side of the break. You are tuned in. We are joined by Gab Gowdy from FanDuel right here on the Voice of Land on the Big Plate Network. Are you struggling to hire the right talent or maybe even find the right career? Vector Technical makes it easy. Since 1992, Vector has provided Ohio employers with a reliable process for hiring and have helped thousands of job seekers advance in their careers. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. We invest time to get to know each client and candidate personally. Vector places people in job opportunities that they are truly excited about. Interested in learning more? Visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com to see a full list of our current job opportunities and to find out what Vector Technical can offer you. Get your gear at voiceoftheland.com forward slash shop. Welcome back to the Voice of Land on the Big Play Network. Kevin Arnold, always positive. Jay Audio, our producer extraordinaire, and we are joined by Gab Gowdy from FanDuel. We're going to have... We're going to talk about a fun team in this town. We mentioned them a little bit at the start. They got a 114-100 win against the Lakers, but who isn't beating the Lakers these days? <laughs> um, they just, they can't shoot the ball from the outside. But a team that's won eight straight, could have won the opener, had a playoff atmosphere up in Toronto. Gab, I'm sure it's it's been fun. I, have you been to some of the games yet this year? It, Me and Gab is... went to a game together. Oh, you did? The game that yeah. that game, uh, who did we just play? The Celtics game, she was there. Oh, man. Yeah, that was awesome. All right, guys, tell me like what that atmosphere was like. Because like, we know the Celtics are one of those highly touted teams. that They're in the upper echelon of the East. And to beat them twice and to have like a playoff atmosphere at home, what was that like to kind of have that back in Cleveland again? I mean, Towards the end of last year, it was feeling like that, too. Mm-hmm. But I feel like every single game is going to be like that. It was awesome. It was it, loud. It reminded me of the Le- LeBron era. Mm-hmm. It was definitely yeah, people loud. Were excited. See, I'll know when that, that feeling is back all the time here, when even the games that you expect to win, the teams that come in here that are at the bottom of, of the league, those, those arenas are still going crazy and they're still full. I was at the game against the Magic. And it had that, like, people on their edge of their seat, like, I want to get up, I want to get into it, but it's the magic. Like, I feel like the Cavs have just enough talent to beat them type thing. And it was kind of – it was still back and forth. It's early. They got young guys on that team. I think uh, Banchero, who's, uh, you know, going to be the top rookie in in this class. But it was like, we want to be that old 20,005, 62, whatever, however many used to be in there. Now it's like 18,000. We want to be that crowd again, but can we yet? Like, it was almost like people were questioning, can we be that rowdy crowd no matter who we're facing? Well, they were rowdy for that Celtic team. That's I can sure. imagine. Yeah, that's for sure. We actually, uh, Brad Stevens' family had the suite directly right behind us. He was in there. We didn't say anything to him, but still kind of cool to see him. Oh, man, Brad Stevens, him coaching Butler and beating up on Cleveland State when I was when I was going there, that, that always sucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that dude is a basketball genius, but... I'm glad he's not coaching the Celtics anymore, that's for sure. I'm glad, he's, yeah, uh, I guess they are too because it doesn't <laughs> matter who they're putting out there. As long as it's not Brad Stevens coaching the team, it seems like they're having having success. And somehow Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum have found found that rhythm. But, hey, Cavs are off to a great start. Is it surprising anyone like how easily Donovan Mitchell is fitting in and they, are, they don't even feel like they've scratched the surface of what they can do yet? I, mean, I thought it was going to work out as soon as it happened. I was like, yeah, that's awesome. This is going to be great for the team. It's a really good player. He seems like a nice, fun guy that's going to fit. Because, like, the Cavs, they're, like, 
a cute little fun team. You know what I mean? Yep. They're not. Did you? Ah, I don't know. They're cool. <laughs> Did you see the the video after the game today uh, on social media? The the junkyard dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people that haven't seen it, and if you're you know tuning in or, or just watching the or listening to the audio on Google, Spotify, or Apple, got to get these plugs in there all the way throughout the show. But um, if you haven't seen it yet, JB Bickerstaff always gives out the junkyard dog chain after the Cavs win. Like who is that guy that got down and dirty, got on the floor, floor burns? The last game, the entire team got the junkyard dog chain. Today he goes to grab it. It's not in the case. Kevin Love has the, the chain in his hand, and he goes, you know what? We're giving it to J.B. Bickerstaff today after that halftime speech because you already know when J.B. in game three or four is losing his voice and the team is losing at halftime and they're talking about halftime speeches, that guy gives everything he has. I, I don't even know how he has a voice at the end of these games. I'm – I mean, yeah, everything he does has been great. Like, everything, he, everything, it's been great. The thing about that video I absolutely loved is you could see every single person on that team is playing for JB. Yeah. They love him. Like, he's just got those guys eating right out of the palm of his hands. Like, he says, do this, and they're like, yes, sir, let's go. And I absolutely love this team. They're just so much fun to watch. They like, have emotion. The, the one thing we've wanted from the Browns for so long, I get right. – I get that Kevin Stefanski is an even keel guy, but even keel only can go so far. You are in professional sports. You are supposed to show I emotion. Need this, I need this halftime speech because <laughs> after the halftime, they interviewed Luke Walton. He even mentioned, he goes, all I know is, man, coach just gave a hell of a halftime speech. Like, all right, I need to hear this. Like, right, every day before I start I work, I just want to let's start it off with J.B. Bickerstaff halftime speeches from now on. Let well, me start my days. I mean, I can probably paraphrase for you. <laughs> the Lakers are ass. I don't know what you guys are doing out here. You're giving up 65 points in the first half to this team. Uh, he probably dropped some LeBron shade, like saying <laughs> this team. You, you know what I mean? Like saying, like, the only reason people know this team is because of this man, and you're going to let him, like, do it again. Because he always beats the Cavs. I would love it if JB found a way to make it a cryptic statement about LeBron, just like LeBron likes to do cryptic tweets or social media mm -hmm. posts out there like that would be the ultimate thing but of course we know that if you know if LeBron became available like I would would yeah 100 percent would yeah, you guys easy. would you guys take LeBron back here being at the point he's at now where he's willing to kind of he was willing to fall back behind Anthony Davis and Anthony Davis can't stay yeah, on the floor 100%. like 100 here I'll put it this way I'm not trading anything for LeBron but if it was a free agent I'd take him and if I like because freebie yeah come on I wouldn't even give up Kevin Love right now because like, I just love him too much. And he deserves, I mean, like, just because they, since that dude got here, they were trying to trade the poor guy. And now he's here just being the veteran coming off the bench. And yeah, I probably shouldn't play highlights when I'm on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We've already had someone talking, like, yeah, we got talking about feed. fixing the, their car, like the chassis in their car or something today. Out of somehow, somehow we had, like, you know. They remind me of, like, when you used to have, like, you might even be too young. When you would have a uh, wireless ho like house phone. The, or, oh, oh, the cordless and, phones. Yeah, yeah you'd have yeah. the cordless house phones, and then you'd pick up people's like baby monitors and stuff. Like, <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Yeah, it, it's been it's been a night over here, Gab. Trust me, it's that's it, funny. <laughs> it's been a night, but you know, it, it helps when you at least have a team on a Sunday that you know that you have faith in that can that can win yeah. a game. Is there is there one area that you've seen? We're kind of to the ten game mark. Is there an area? Jay or Gab that you've seen that this team could really add a piece is it that wing that they're still missing on this team because that's where I see like taking it from where they're at now as they progress throughout the year to taking it to that next level to truly competing when you get to the end of the season I feel like it's that true three and D that Karis LeVert is trying to become but has not fully gotten He's into doing just pretty yet. good defensively this year and Okoro is amazing defensively this year. His offense. But he is, just can't score for. No. He just he's, can't score. He's got yeah. the yips when it comes to shooting that corner three. And I know he could shoot it better than what he is this year. I think that's just a mental thing. Maybe he should try somewhere else, you know? Maybe move around a little bit. Maybe yeah. not the corner yeah. three. I, I Maybe mean, a layup. 
because people are going to leave him open. Because, yeah, they're just daring him to shoot. Yeah. It, right. And it, that's taking, actually, that's taking the LeBron model of playing defense. Like, LeBron looks at guys' percentages from the floor and from different spots around the floor. And if you're not – if you don't show that you can shoot wide open, he he isn't going to guard you. If you hit a couple, he's he'll give it to you, but you have to do it consistently enough. And a Coro yeah. to get more minutes – He's got to. He's got to score. I, that's a big problem. That's what's going to take. If he can score, that's what's going to take a deep-ish team to a deep contending team. I don't even think. Honestly, guys, I don't think they need him to score all that much. If he can come in and his role is lockdown defender, you got scoring from Mitchell, Garland, Love, Lavert. Uh, you got Allen dunking on people. Mobley can score like. There's scores on the team. Seti Osmond could shoot the three now. Wade could shoot the three. Like, you have scores. We have plenty of scores. If he can literally just come in and he's just locked down defender, he'll have a spot always on the team. Like, he'll make a difference. But you just need to have that. You always got to – that's what's got to be your role, I guess. Yeah, I just think when you – in those moments like today in the first half, if, if you – and I was – you know, we were out – Wife and I, we were out downtown. We were kind of like at a restaurant. We could see the game going on. And I saw the stat pop up that in the first half, the Cavs had 42 points from Garland and um, Mitchell. They only had 10 from the rest of their team at that point. I think they ended up with like 13 from the rest of the team in the first half. When other guys aren't scoring and you know as the game goes, if Garland and Mitchell are going off, teams are going to be able to kind of – they're going to be able to stem the tide against them. You're going to need guys to come off the bench that are going to end up with wide open opportunities. Maybe not that many. You're going to need them to knock them down, and Okoro needs to be one of those guys on this team. If other guys aren't stepping up. If we didn't get Mitchell, I think that dude's so good he's covering those warts up. Like, that's where I think he has elevated this I, team. Like, yeah. if we didn't have him this team, like, Okoro would be killing us. But Mitchell is so good offensively especially in the clutch moments. He's covering those warts up of him. And I love the fact that he picked him up after the one post game and mentioned how he's playing amazing D and his offense will come. Like, that's a leader right there. I I, I, I still can't believe we got him. Like, I absolutely love this guy. I can't believe that we got him and people were like, oh, my God, we're getting rid of Colin Sexton. These people don't watch other Colin teams, just I didn't fit. I don't know. Unless he wanted to be a six man. That was the only way he was right, going to fit. Like, see, he's a good was, ball player. I have two Cleveland sports takes that that was like the hill I was dying on. I was mm. never going to change my mind. Here's the two Baker Mayfield, not good. Off the team. Second one, Colin Sexton, six man. And both of those were very controversial for whatever reason it was, whatever reason that was. But, I don't know, because people like to argue. Like, we always say, like, right. if everyone knew anything and everything about sports, we'd be millionaires betting on gambling. And no one becomes a millionaire betting on sports because no one knows everything. We're, right. They're just – people get upset about sports opinions too much. It's like sports – Yeah, Colin Sexton great. does something to these people. I don't know what he does, the <laughs> chokehold he has on these people. I, I, I love Colin number. Sexton. I actually yeah. wanted I like to, Colin. I wanted him to draft him because I love the fact yeah. that when he was in Alabama like and he had to play a team three on five and he was like single-handedly almost yeah. won that game. Yeah. I'm like – all right, I like that guy. That guy's got yeah. Home. So I, 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 I had like nothing him, bad to say about him. He just sometimes there's just it's fit. Like it wasn't like he was a bad person. Didn't fit like that. Mm. His just style of game is a six man, and he's doing he's flourishing in Utah. Like Laurie Marketing, good for him. He's doing great there. Like I have no problem with those guys. I root for him, but yeah, he just wasn't gonna. I don't think a fit next to Garland. Here's what I'll say about. My thoughts on Colin Sexton, like I, again, I was a guy that liked Colin Sexton. I, I, you know, maybe I didn't argue, didn't go to bat for him against people that didn't like him. I understood why people didn't like him, but if you have a chance to, he's a piece to use to get a talent like Donovan Mitchell. You do that every mm-hmm. every day of the week. As much as I like the guy, like there's not, I'm I'm not going to. Here's the difference. I'm not going to d- deny getting Donovan Mitchell when you're basically only getting rid of. Colin Sexton and not breaking up any of the rest of the core of this team, and you're seeing how important that was. I think to your point, Jay, about Colin taking being like that guy that was three on five at Alabama and, and taking on a bunch of you know taking on that situation and helping them win and everything. He may have been a guy that was trying to take on too much 
just on himself and mm. not fitting in. Because if he, you see this junkyard dog chain being given to the coach and everybody's jumping on him, everybody's buying into what J.B. Bickerstaff is telling him, if they get, got rid of him, I feel like there was part of him that wasn't buying into that and he was still trying to do too much. He was trying to be the guy after the guy left. It's always hardest to be the guy after that guy leaves. When LeBron left again, Colin Sexton was the next guy drafted. Well, here's the difference between these two right Try here. Try to it's take simple. too much of that on himself. One guy right now is getting – he'll be mentioned for MVP. The other guy's going to get mentioned for sixth man of the year. Both are great awards. One's the right. better award. And, and one's the talent you'd rather have on your mm -hmm. team because it's going to bring everything together. Gab, can't thank you enough for, for jumping on the show. Um, want to give you the opportunity we always give every guest the opportunity um you know, i know a lot of people follow you so everybody kind of knows where you're where you're at on social media but um what can what are th some things with FanDuel people can start getting into or expect away. come the turn of the year um mm -hmm. and then the podcast too make sure people know where they can find that as well hey um in case you guys aren't aware which it's literally shoved down our throats at this point Sports betting is legal January 1st. See you guys there. FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a good time. Um, finally, it's happening. Uh, yep. Isn't and your then station teaming up with FanDuel? I don't know. I, I think so. I, know, I don't get told nothing about the place. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know more about it. work at ESPN Cleveland than you do, and you work for them. I, I just do what I'm told, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just there so I don't get fined, all right? <laughs> That's I, want, I, I, I want to say I think FanDuel's teaming up with ESPN Cleveland right now, but I could be wrong. I don't work for them. There's so, there's so many. That's the thing. Right, there's so many. Yeah. Even if I knew, I probably couldn't say anything at this point. So Gab was in the middle of plugging her stuff. So what can, what can, people, get, what can people expect from FanDuel? <laughs> um. Also, we're going to be going to some games soon, especially January 1st. We're going to be going on a little sports betting tour. Oh, nice. Say the Cavs game. Could we? We're going to do Browns game, but then we're going to home game, so that's kind of lame. Bengals game. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of things. Also, Tuesdays, 7 p.m., have a show on Sports My Conduct on their YouTube and Twitch. And we just roast everyone and everything. And we're going to roast Aaron Rodgers probably, so it's going to be the main one. Hey, after the season. That won't be hard. <laughs> yeah, that, right. <laughs> I was just about to say the same thing. After the season he's having. And, uh, the, the I don't season, know why I'm enjoying it, too. Like, he's so weird. I don't know. Like, I'm sorry. Aaron Rodgers yeah. is a weird dude. So is Russell Wilson. Yeah. Yes. Him, yes. Russ and Rodgers got weird. Like, I, mm -hmm. And it probably was already there, but like we just didn't see it because they were so good. Yeah. But now it's just you got to have fun with it. So. Yeah. Gab, thank you so much. Gab Gowdy from yeah, FanDuel sure. and Sportsman Like Conduct Podcast. Thank you so much. You're always welcome on the show whenever you want. Thank you for tuning, uh, coming on tonight. That was Gab Gowdy coming on to the Voice of the Land for our bi-week special. Uh, on the other side of the final break, we'll react to a couple things with the, uh, with the Cavs, but more so there was a rant I wanted to do last week. I think that there's kind of two rants. There's a Cavs rant and now another rant. We'll get into that. And wherever the rest of the show takes us, we'll, we'll get how we there. Roll. That's how we roll on The Voice of the Land, right here on the Big Play Network. Are you looking for a career in manufacturing? Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has partnered with some of the biggest and the best companies throughout Northeastern Ohio. The recruiters at Vector Technical will coach you through the entire job process and will help you land an opportunity that you are truly excited about. Vector does not add any additional fees and offers benefits as well as free online skills training through Penn Foster. To learn more, visit www.vectortechnicalinc.com and make sure to check out our job board to see a full list of our current opportunities and apply. One. It's the final segment on The Voice of Land on this Sunday, November 6, 2022, right? Sure. I mean, I know it's 2022, and it is November 6th. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Good job. Good job. I, thanks. I mean, I don't – these days are just – Congratulations. Starting. You know the date. <laughs> I'm, I'm making progress, guys. <laughs> Moving up in the world. Guys. I was just about to say, it's the final segment, and we don't know where we're going to go. Hey, we already started by talking about, do we even know what the date of the <laughs> actual day that we're on is? Uh, thank you so much to anybody that is tuning in uh, live on Twitter, 
Facebook, YouTube, through our social media handles, and, of course, Big Play. If you follow either one, you can catch us. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the follow button, the like button, whatever you can to make sure that you get the notification that we are live every Sunday at 7 o'clock. And thank you so much to, for, to Gab Gowdy for coming on. Uh, make sure, of course, FanDuel is going to be one of those big places come January 1st. FanDuel, you've already heard them, them and DraftKings. I mean, I, I feel like I've been hanging out with this girl for like two of the uh, – we, we tailgated at that event with Stipe, which that was mm-hmm. a really fun time. And then I went to the end up going to the Cavs game because I probably asked a good 25 people, and I think everyone went to that game except for you, Kevin. <laughs> I think everyone ended up making what game? the Cavs oh, Celtics yeah. game. Like everyone ended up having tickets. I'm like, I can't find anyone to go to this game. I, I didn't so, get a call. <laughs> we're always busy. That's true. I probably was busy. It was a Wednesday Ouch. night, and I was like, <laughs> so I, had, I was like, all right, I'm figuring we're going to have her on. I want to get to know her a little better and stuff yeah. like that. So I just told her, I'm like, you can have all three tickets. I'm just going by myself. And she brought her friend, and we, it was nice because we had a nice spaced out area with an empty seat. You know, Jay. You, you know I'm going to get more tickets. Like, I got I a know. guy. You, you can't piss off our AI system. You scares saw me. <laughs> you, <laughs> you saw when Jarvis turned into Vision how powerful Vision got. I mean, he could pick up the hammer, dude. Yeah, let's let's uh, not let him throw the hammer. Down. Let's not tick off <laughs> <laughs> our producer of this show. Hey, I'm going out and introducing myself to future people for the show. I was for the show. Yeah. Okay, but it, it's, hey, <laughs> it's like, hey, you get you got one of the one of the two. There's you know you mentioned another name. Can I take you, you to a Cavs game? We, yeah, we went okay. To, yeah. Okay. I'll wait for we my the, t- we had, I'm waiting for my tickets. Now. We had we had the picture. We <laughs> so had the, I'm gonna turn that right around on you. I took you to a Cavs game. You could take me to a Cavs game. Now. Yeah, you, you saw the empty chair and everything. Yeah. You, you tweeted out the picture of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh honest. yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I remember oh that. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, that was a year ago. It dude. was a year ago. <laughs> This is why we don't have bits on this show. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to. I can't we remember. We are a bit. I don't, we are a bit. Yeah, I don't know what date it is. Yeah. <laughs> you don't remember. Anyways, Kevin, <laughs> yeah. last week you didn't get to get into it. Well, What is I mean, bothering you? I mean, the first thing, I feel like Peter has more of the, more of the rant. The first thing that's bothering me this week is Bally Sports, and it's always bothering me. You know, we pay – so – the wife and I, we paid for a year. We didn't pay the monthly. Oh, you paid the... Oh. We paid the year. And it's not just us anymore. Like, I know you you had problems. You got rid of Bally Sports Plus. And then I picked it back up today because... Peter, you haven't gotten myself. it yet, right? No, I have not. But it's Wait. not, it's not <laughs> working for people. Mm. How, it worked today. Yeah, it did. It did. But how are you supposed to watch the games if, that if you're going to control local market teams? And I know Bally Sports is all around the country. So I'm not going at Bally Sports Cleveland. We have great people that work over there, um, working for multiple things. You know, a lot of you know, they brown shows. I, I they, like the they shows play. they put on. I like the production they put on. Just make it work. If I'm going to pay $20 a month, I want it to work. Like, you're more... Then my HBO subscription, guess what? When I turn on HBO, it works. You're more than my Netflix. When I turn on Netflix, it works. So I don't complain. If I'm going to pay for you, you better work it. Here's, here's the thing. Is the Netflix for you. You ever get the, any content blacked out on your Netflix? No. 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 Oh. Are, they, are they still blacking out the local games on some of the Bally stuff? Because I, I thought they were doing that with some of the, uh, no. the Guardians games <clears throat> earlier this year. So... Or do I have that wrong? Because <clears throat> no, they didn't black out Guardians games. I think on Bally, what happened is if they were on like MLB Network or one of the other streaming services simultaneously, you oh. can't watch them on that more accessible level. Gotcha. gotcha. Because Bally Sports is saying there are product you can't you can't show them here. Everybody else can see them. But you oh so, okay so if it so if you had MLB Network, they would black it out on MLB Network the Bally's feed okay yeah that's and they black out so they'll black out like nationally televised games if the local the gotcha. local uh, entity is showing it at the same time but there's also uh, there's also an issue with the Bally Sports app that's not necessarily blacked out but it feels like they're blacking out the game because it says. You are you don't have access to this team's 
stuff. Like it makes mm-hmm. it seem like you aren't in that region, you weren't from that area, so you don't get this game. I, yeah, so, that's. I don't I, know. I, it's I know, and I know I that. Know. I mean, it's a lot of money in there, and it's it, it's frustrating because. We, you know, it's just so much. It's so much freaking money. If you want to watch, I can go on like so, a, anyways, a whole yeah, show. Go, rant. We could do a whole show. I'm just on this. streaming services costing me too much money. Yeah, like, yeah. It was. It was a great streaming services were a great idea. And now it's out of control. It's out of control, and now you're you've taken everything and branched it off into all these different multiverses. <laughs> we're in the multiverse of streaming. I don't know where I am. You know. Well, here's part of the problem is with okay when cable came out, right? People were could play. You're paying all this money for cable, and you're paying for channels you don't want. Yeah. Like yes. if you if you didn't care about you know HGTV I don't or five hundred news channels exactly, but you're you span one two three through twenty five. But, I didn't need but those. you're paying for those. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so the whole thing with streaming was, oh, good, we're just gonna pay for what we want. Well, guess what? They've got to fill twenty four seven. Yes. And the nice thing about like Netflix or HBO, they're not like real time streaming, right? They don't right. have right. They usually don't have live broadcast. I think HBO might have some sporting events, but now now they just added all these damn twenty four seven channels that they're like, well, we gotta pay for all this content, so I can't. I'm not gonna pay twenty bucks a month for. I know. Yeah, I don't. I just. I don't get it. Like I. I don't understand. And I. I. I jumped on Jana's tweet about this because I wasn't home. The I think. It was Friday night when they were facing off against Detroit. Mm-hmm. She couldn't watch, and there was I jumped on I jumped on Twitter when I got home from doing high school football, and a bunch of people were having the same problem. The app was not working. the The Bally Sports Plus, which was supposed to be more accessible than just Dude, logging in with a cable provider on BallySports.com or explain the app. this. I it wouldn't work on my TV, and it would just be this little box. Mm. With the play symbol in it, and I'd click, and then it would the box play yeah. symbol would turn gray, and then I'd just sit there, and it wouldn't show anything. I'm like, I go on my phone, play the app, and there's the game. I'm like, okay, this is working. Why isn't it working there? I'm like, I, I don't know. I, it I was on my free trial, and then I stopped for a few days, and then the Cavs played the Lakers. I'm like, damn it, I gotta watch this, especially it was gonna end right before our show. I was like, oh, I definitely gotta watch this. So, yeah, I know. They got me for twenty. You have this month to get your craft together because you won't get my next 20 poor kevin over here already paid for the year hey we thought it was actually, did you equal save money that, doing it that way then? yeah it saves money that way so uh um, i mean i'm probably still gonna end up paying every single month i'm, I'm a know. sucker <laughs> like i'm a well, sucker and, that's the beauty of not having kids so at least i could spend the 20 dollars. <laughs> that's the thing we gotta talk about these games so we gotta be able to see them when we have the time to be able to see them and we're not able to see right. them like I, I said it, either get it right or give it up. Get it right or give it up to those that are going to do it right. That's rant number one. Sorry to just end with rants. but th- this <laughs> They're is fun of, rants. It's fun. This is a fun, fun one. I didn't want to bring this up till now because I know I, I feel like our guest was a little bit more on the, the other side of this, this rant. And I'm, I know we have a lot of people that probably tune in or listen or know who we are at least. And um, they probably feel differently. If you feel differently, I'm not trying to tell you how to feel. I'm only going to tell you how I feel from my standpoint, and that is with the holidays. Guess what, people? The next holiday is Thanksgiving. I I know the retail stores have to get their stuff up, and all these big businesses, and even downtown Cleveland, they got to put their stuff up because it takes a while for some of these bigger light displays and all of that. They have their lighting ceremony, usually the Saturday after Thanksgiving, but everybody else that go that has their videos that say me on October 31st and it's them dancing in their Halloween costume. Me on November 1st. All I want for Chris like the Mariah Carey song. The Mar- Mariah Carey stalling out now. Yeah, finally. like like it's them in their Christmas jammies and they got their trees up and stuff. I mean, there are other holidays celebrated in the month of December and we won't we'll we will make sure that we acknowledge all of those holidays here on the show. But those that celebrate Christmas being the bulk of the retail sales this month and next month. I am one of the biggest Christmas fans out there. I watch 
all 25 days of Freeform and AMC's 25 days of Christmas movies. I make sure I get every movie in. I got to watch the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation a bunch of times. What but, movies do we have to watch? We'll get into that another time. Yes, that'll be another show. We don't have enough time yeah, for that I just tonight. realized, as soon as I looked at the clock, I was like, we'll get into that another And show. it says 8.59, but it's actually 7.59, so we're not, we didn't go an hour over. We're still a minute before, but we'll still probably go over by a couple minutes. I'm trying to minimize mm-hmm. that right now. I will say this. I, again, I am someone, I have all the Christmas sweaters. I will get in my, I will get the Christmas jammies. I want it all. I put up so many freaking strands of lights on my tree. I have to go six to eight strands. It's got to be all lit up. Every single corner, I look at it from every angle. When do you do this? I do that after Thanksgiving. The only, the first appropriate time for the all of the Christmas music to be played and all of that stuff to be talked about, I will accept When Santa Claus is rolling down whatever street that is in New York in front of Macy's for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, once he comes rolling down and everybody starts eating their Thanksgiving dinner, you get that cleaned up, you can transition. For me, it's really December 1st, but with Thanksgiving not ever happening on the same exact date, it's just the same day of the year in November... I know it's kind of tough, and sometimes it comes earlier where you got a little bit more time. Other times it comes later. But, like, for me, I will only become annoying to my wife with all (laughs) the Christmas stuff and how many decorations we got to try to fit into our apartment. And hopefully one day, very, very soon, we get a house, and I'll be able to do much more, and I'll be even more annoying at that point. (laughs) For as much as I am the biggest Christmas fan out there, I feel like the only appropriate time is once Thanksgiving is done. Give Thanksgiving its due. It's one of the absolute best holidays. You get to fill your face for no reason, and it's great. Maybe though there's a reason, but yeah. Yes. It's so I much. Know. I always say Thanksgiving <laughs> is my favorite. It's completely less stressful than Christmas. There's no expectations of getting people good gifts and stuff because that's the most nerve wracking thing about Christmas is. You want to give everyone a good gift, and that's that's hard. They're like, you, especially your significant other, you're like just boggled. They're like, "Oh, what do I get her this year? What do you get?" And it stresses you out. Everyone gets stressed out. No, you get there, you eat food, you sit there and you watch football, you pass out, get up, eat more food, eat more dessert, and there's just a hodgepodge of all kinds of different delicious foods. I personally love turkey. I don't think it's the respect that it need it should deserve if it's cooked correctly. It is one of the best meats you can ever have. Like, oh, I'm with you, Kevin. Put some respect on Thanksgiving's name. Please put respect on Thanksgiving's name. I think my dad's even calling me right He's now. He's probably upset. Put- like, yeah, let him know. Let him know. <laughs> He's probably going to come on See, the phone and say, hashtag, let him for know us, Thanksgiving. It was always, though, it was right after like, Thanksgiving. We came home. My stepmom would, and this is before, like, it, it's not as bad as it was, but she'd get up the butt crack of dawn and her and my aunt would go do that crazy uh black friday shopping when Mm. it was chaos (laughs) and then after that she'd get back and hurry up and try to sneak as many gifts in without us peeking and trying to figure Mm. it out and then that next day would have been uh saturday we all would hang up christmas lights outside depending on weather Mm. or if it was nice or if it was bad we'd put up the christmas tree that was like that weekend was after Thanksgiving, we put up our Christmas lights. Now, if people put up their Christmas lights, their outdoor displays today, mm-hmm. because this weekend, because of how nice it was. I was so half tempted to do it, but I was like, Kevin will be mad if I don't. No, uh, no, I totally get it because you're like. No, I'm laughing because I knew what the rant was today. And I'm like, if I come in here and I tell him that I just put up Christmas lights, he might he might just blow you just, a you just don't turn them on until after yes, Thanksgiving. I was going to say this. I couldn't help moment. myself. I knew if I put them up, I'd be like. I'm going to have to see how this looks. That's what I was going to say. Like, if people put them up today, fine. If I'm driving by and I see people's Christmas displays up, uh, you know, in the community and, you know, across the town, as long as when I come back through, if I come back by your house and it is dark because it gets dark a lot earlier, and that is, it is a dark display that I can barely see any of the decorations, (laughs) you're doing the right thing. Thing. Turn my lights on. I'm looking out the window, and Kevin just standing there staring at me. <laughs> like, 
like, Tiffany, turn the lights off. He's scaring me. I, I can't wait until I can go all Clark Griswold and everybody and light up a freaking house and cause them to turn the turn the switch on the nuclear power. The, you know, <laughs> causing a blackout. <laughs> like I all the lights dim in the town. Trust me, like Christmas. And then make... you're gonna come on the show one day, but yeah, this is from my cast because I fell off my roof, <laughs> putting lights up all over the place. And why is the floor all wet, Margo? <laughs> I don't know. Or, I don't know, oh, Todd. Todd. <laughs> Actually, it's reversed. But uh, that, uh, my mind's not fully in it because Thanksgiving needs respect. I'm not going to start going. Even all- the radio stations, they don't play the Christmas music till after Thanksgiving. I'm no, sure. no, so dude. It's, they're... it's going to start next week. I think. Yeah. I'm surprised it didn't start last week, but I think because it wasn't a full week in November, I. Th- if you turn on the typical radio stations, I don't know that we can give their name, like their call signs, whatever. But there's two in this town that play Christmas music. The one I listened to actually, they didn't. We weren't playing it yet, so it'll probably be tomorrow. Check oh, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> give us an update in the I'll in the group you know. chat. All right, <laughs> but we will do a show where or a segment at least on the must watch after Thanksgiving. We will do a show that talks about the must watch movies. In the Christmas list, the must do's, the must don'ts. I got all that for you. I'm all about it. Oh, I got you. But again, once Thanksgiving is done, if there's anything you take from this show today, if you tuned in, put respect on Thanksgiving's name. <laughs> and with that, we will bid adieu to this bi week special for the Voice of the Land. We didn't even get into the Buckeyes. That was just a dis. I don't, I don't even want to It was to a weird game. I blame it. That when you got weather like that, it's just kooky yeah, things happen. They, they, they won, and they got what they did, what they needed to do. That's all I care about. The only, th- I think the one thing you can say about the Buckeyes, the next two games you're going to have to build more physicality and get your run game going again before mm-hmm. you hit the game at the end of the year. And we will talk more about the Buckeyes as we get closer and going into that one because those fans have every right to talk, and they're going to be talking all the way up to that game. It, time to time to put the kibosh on uh, on the old uh, that team up north having some having some fun, and with that actually that'll be the end of the show for always positive Jay. You always say at the end of every show, uh, go big or go. Oh, what do I always say? <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about it. Be about yeah, it. Yeah, don't talk about it. Be about it. I got all these sayings in my head. I'm like, which one was it? Because you pointed Boy. at me. I'm like, oh no. Boy, it's been a day. Yes, yeah, it's been a it day. Totally has. So for always positive Jay, who. Talked about it, but may need to be more about it, like all of us do. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, <laughs> more audio. Peter Tellup. I'm Kevin. I'm reminding all of you: oh, don't let, ever let anyone tell you it's just a game. We truly love you all. Three thousand and, as Mike Allen always used to say, "All gas, no breaks." We'll see you all next week as the Browns start the second half of their season. Your Browns post game show right here on the Big Play Network is the Voice of Land. We'll see you next week. 